First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now taking a look there at Portland. And you can still see a little bit of haziness there over the city, and there's a good reason for that. Hi, I am Greg Nibbler. As I just mentioned, this is Fox 12 Now. This is our live show from our digital desk here at the Fox 12 Oregon headquarters. Appreciate everybody joining us, whether you're watching on YouTube, our apps, or our website. Uh, thanks for being here. We're live here every weekday at 1 p.m. Pacific, covering a lot of different topics. And right now, I figured it would be a good time, especially if you're anywhere in the metro area, all the way down the Willamette Valley, up into Washington, uh, to do some updates on some of the fires that have been happening here, especially in the last less than 24 hours, really. So first off, let's talk about what was going on last night, and that was the fire up in Longview, Washington, uh, at Weyerhaeuser. So paper mill right there. This is 1700 Industrial Way. And uh, if you were around last night, you definitely probably smelled some of that smoke. It, it went all the way down the Willamette Valley as well, uh, com coming all the way there from Washington. So it did close some roads last night. So that is some pictures of the fire right there during the day. And then we'll take a look here. We've got some other uh, pictures from, from later on in the evening. You can see there's some wood piles burning, uh, wood ships, and that is a standard part of a paper mill. It looks like that's a conveyor belt right there. Uh, going through there, this uh, the compound itself is about 60 acres. We don't have an update on what caused that fire yet. And uh, they did say that the investigation is going to be probably long after they get everything suppressed. They're still putting water on it right now, as far as we know. And we have a crew uh, that should be getting there on site and is going to be giving some updates on where that's at. It does sound like they contained it uh, fairly well to the property, but we'll have more information to follow up on that coming up. But just those pictures... I mean, that's a pretty, pretty huge amount of smoke coming out of uh, that fire right there. And as we mentioned, that was coming down. It does sound like some of that has cleared out. We'll talk about the air quality here in just a minute. But uh, incredible footage that we did get uh, of that fire. And uh, of note, no injuries have been reported. So that is a very important part of that. Uh, nobody hurt, but man, that is huge. So we went from that, and uh, which again, our crew is uh, on the way up there right now to get some more information and find out some more about what's happening with it currently. We had that happen, and that was overnight. And then you go into this morning, and you get something else that's happening. And this is the uh, fire that was happening in Northeast Portland, Sandy, and 122nd, where we had the former Kmart right there. Um, as you can see, not in use Kmart, former Kmart. Uh, is uh, is still, as of right now, it sounds like some of the crews have taken off, but this w turned into a four-alarm fire. So this was about 6.30 a.m. Portland Fire and Rescue tweeted. They were on the scene of it. Um, this Kmart's been closed for years, so uh, as far as what was inside the building right now, I don't have that information, but it closed for years. And uh, they found heavy fire sh upon arrival. A second alarm was called. Six minutes later, a third alarm, and then a fourth alarm at... 7 a.m. So that's within a half hour they went from showing up to a four alarm fire. Um, they did save that by 8.15 a.m. They had reduced some of it and some of the crews were leaving. But again, also just a massive fire going on right there. Um, as far as we know, they're still putting some water on that uh, to contain that. It doesn't sound like it spread, it spread outside of that Kmart that was contained there. But uh, you could see that all over the city. Uh, with, with that fire and that smoke coming on too. So that's just a couple and that's showing too, you know, what kind of season that we're in. It is, it is definitely fire season. That's, these are, this is a building, that's an industrial complex, those two different things that were on fire, but there's a lot of other things that could be burning as well. Uh, let's talk really quick about the air quality. So we're taking a look here. It, yesterday and even earlier today, there were some uh, pretty big warnings about air quality, specifically in Clark County, but even into the metro area. But as you can see right now, this is the current map. Uh, from the Oregon website, from the Oregon DEQ or air quality website, and it does look like it's uh, it's cleaned up a little bit, so it's not as severe of a warning as we thought it was going to be. I know that we had a first alert about that that was uh, rescinded because it's it started to clear up a little bit. So that's good news as far as that's concerned. But these things could happen, you know, at any time. There is uh, definitely a lot of dangers out there right now when it comes to fires, and that's. For a number of reasons, but also mainly because let's let's be honest, it's very hot outside, and we're taking a look here at the weather right now. So, coming up, let me pull that up here for you. Well, I don't have that. All oh, right, 
that was there. I'll tell you what the weather is. It's going to be hot. It's going to be in the 90s uh, coming up this afternoon. And there is going to be a little bit of a wind as well, which could add to that danger of fires. So that's always something to, to be concerned with. And there's a lot of ways that we can help mitigate some of those issues. Um, transitioning from that, though, talking about what we can do you know, for ourselves, there's also some things that the state are doing. So we've got these fires here at the buildings, but we also have a lot of wildfires that have been going on. And I'm sure some of you have been near these. There have been some evacuation notices that have been issued and then rescinded for a few different fires up and down the Columbia Gorge. We have them even out towards Forest Grove, Malala, there was a fire, Estacada, there was a fire, and some of those are still actually being fought to some extent. And some of the things that PGE and also the state are doing to help track those and further their abilities to um, catch the fires in the beginning, understand a little bit more about it, are, are by using cameras. And our own Connor McCarthy went out and spoke to some officials about that, about how they're using cameras and even some AI to track some of these fires, the wildfires. And uh, let's go ahead and play this from Connor. This gives a little bit more context on that, but definitely an interesting way to use technology to help the fight the fires. The 2 fire burning just east of Estacada is mostly out, and crews are currently building containment lines. Now, though it only burned about 40 acres, the Clackamas Fire District 1 chief says that new ultra-high-definition cameras deployed nearby helped fire crews develop a plan quickly. Fire season is underway across the Pacific Northwest. Already firefighters have responded to dozens of small fires across the region. This one near Estacada started on Sunday and so far has burned about 40 acres. Clackamas County Fire District 1 Chief Phil Schneider says they got on this fire quickly because of a new tool deployed by PGE. Yeah, it's been a game changer. Phil Schneider is referring to these ultra high definition cameras made by Pano, a San Francisco based tech company. He says the cameras helped spot the 224 fire and gave real-time updates to officials across the area. I had a bunch of calls from either Estacada or the Sandy City wanting to know, are we in danger? And I could, I could easily say that I'm monitoring it 24-7 almost and watching where it's going. 27 cameras were bought and now deployed by PGE across its service area. You can see from this map the range and locations of the cameras. PGE says the goal was to put them in high-risk wildfire areas. People are sending us positive, like, hey, I feel safer. Thank you for set, having these cameras there in my backyard. Panel says they mount the cameras on existing cell towers, water towers, and government communication structures. They rotate 360 degrees once a minute, looking for the first sign of smoke. This video shows the range and clearness of the cameras. When night falls, infrared cameras activate to catch hotspots. Kind of relaying it back to the smoke detectors that came out in the 60s, you know saves a lot of lives, a lot of property, and I see this now just being on the landscape doing the same thing. Pano says the plan is to get more of their cameras deployed across the West Coast to help firefighters jump on fires fast. Schneider says he's on board. I'm sold. I mean, it's awesome. When it comes to the 224 fire, that is 20% contained, and also all evacuation levels have been lowered to a level one. In Estacada, Connor McCarthy, Fox 12 Oregon. Oh, yeah, so an interesting way, again, you know, that technology is being used to help uh, try to track some of these fires that are going on. We all have been used to this over the last several years, but really wildfires are nothing new in the Northwest. But specifically, I would say since 2020, we're all quite hyper aware. Um, I do have a little bit more information here, too. So this is something from our KPTV Fox 12 Oregon website. This is where you can take a look at what's happening right now when it comes to the wildfire. So this is something you can go to at any point. If you want to find out some information about what's going on, uh, you can get a lot of details on here as far as what's burning, what's happened, how far they are, and uh, you know what's happening right now. So 22 active fires in the region. Um, a lot of acres burned already, and we're only in, well, middle of July, so we still have a lot of time left. So something to absolutely be aware of. And I will say we've got a lot of guides, too, that we've done here with Fox 12 Now, some interviews um, from a number of different officials about ways to be safe, to help prevent forest fires, to help report something if you see it. And you can watch all of those videos on our YouTube channel. So that's the Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you here in just a, a short amount of time, but I wanted to get those updates again about what's happened so far with some of these uh, ones that we've seen in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to be the last of them, but maybe there are some things we can do to help prevent that or at least mitigate some of those risks. So watch some of those videos. We've got some great ones there about if you're going out into the woods, how to make sure, you know, there's a lot of fire bans, so be aware of that. You know, don't, don't start a fire if there's a fire ban. Don't, just don't do that. Um, but even if there is a fire, some different ways that you can help uh, control that or at least 
be safer out there so that we can uh, get through the season with, with less fires, less smoke, like we've been doing with here. But that's, uh, that's about it for this segment right now. So again, this is Fox 12 now. We get to go live. We're here in the newsroom. We bring you the information as we get it. You know, I'll show you what I've got, what I've found out. We've got reporters out there going on the scene for everything else that's happening. Like I said, we've got somebody heading up there to Longview right now. I believe Drew Marine is on her way there, maybe there now. So we'll have some updates on that. Uh, as well coming up on later broadcasts and if anything does happen breaking news wise we will be here to bring that to you here this afternoon so again we're on youtube we're on uh, our, our apps we're on the website so anytime you see something that's happening we'll push out alerts as well and i'll be here to bring you the information that we have as we get it and uh, that also includes sometimes interviews and other segments that come along with this show as well we we do Across uh, the board of a lot of different things. Uh, coming up at 1.30 p.m., I believe Bill Plumpton is going to be joining me, the legendary uh, animator, cartoonist uh, from Oregon originally. He's getting an award, so he's going to be joining the show here in just a little bit, so you'll want to come back and definitely hear that interview. But uh, for now, I will sign off for a minute, so wherever you're at, just continue watching whatever's on there. I'll be back here in just a little bit. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.